Several We've got years ago. Covered. He won't be a problem. Flashback. You did a fine job. Thank you. You're thinking All Might would have settled the matter 30 minutes sooner, aren't you? You wish he'd answer the call. Uh, literally no one said anything about that complex much. He's over here! Endeavor. Endeavor, how do you feel about the fact that All Might would have solved this 30 minutes earlier? Endeavor. Oh, this is the origin story of Skeleton Man. What, did he knock a pen out of his hand or something? Seven years ago, my dream almost came true, but you took me alive. The only thing a man should get to choose for himself is his ending. So he was trying to go out through an Endeavor battle. I started digging into your personal life. Why, you ask? <laughs> Isn't it obvious? Is that the, what do you call it? The drugs we confiscated on the boat? You are the one What's it called? I Juice? for. <laughs> the Unforgiven. I was just saying how, like, usually in life you don't get these big, dramatic, heroic moments where you get to show up and save people and therefore redeem yourself in the eyes of people who are maybe unsure about you. But this show is literally called My Hero Academia, so looks like that's what's on the menu today. <laughs> Sun saving, maybe. Also about this guy's origin, it's sort of a weird refracted version of something we've seen a lot in the show where people are formed very significantly by who they meet in their darkest moments. Obviously Shigaraki and All for One, the mafia guy whose name I already have forgotten, and his underlings. <laughs> but this time seems more accidental and like warped in the way it formed. Though I feel like Endeavor might be more than happy to grant his wish. Another brother? Person I thought brother. you three were close. So tell I us more about, them all about Toya. Toya, yeah. Our family's been making progress, except Natsu. In his mind, our father basically killed Toya. Basically killed Toya. Basically killed Toya. What does that mean? It's a big qualifier. It was super delicious. I mean it. Glad you liked it. Don't forget you said you'd give me that tofu recipe. Will do. <laughs> that was the... <laughs> like, gruffest way to say the nicest thing. I couldn't be happier that you're Shota's friend, Midoriya. Thank you. It's got a lot of warmth. She's like the emotional bedrock of this family right now. Is he controlling paint? Why doesn't the number one hero have a bigger car? Oh great, the brat's not happy with his free ride. <laughs> this isn't driver. usual, yeah. Few people give it back to Bakugo. Huh? Oh, it brought him right to him. Wasting no time. There was no, like, phone call, there was no blackmail. No elaborate plot, he just attacked Endeavor's car with his own son. I guess it saves a lot of time. How specific is this quirk? Is it like he can only use the paint on highways? That's what I'm seeing. You remember me, don't you? Say you do! Nope. Seven years ago. Oh, he does. I guess he would. He's shown he's very, very good about details, remembering things that are related to hero work. See, I have nothing in this world worth protecting! Don't think I won't kill him! Please, don't mess it up this time! I want you... to murder me. I feel like I should know this already, but I don't. What is the legality of heroes killing? Like, I think it's safe to guess that they would avoid it if they could, but with the level of power of some of these heroes, you gotta imagine that it would just happen and it would be inevitable on some level. It could be alive or dead or somewhere in between, who knows? Hard to tell so think nothing of it! This is absolutely terrifying because this guy's so off the rails. Who knows? Let's go! Hey, not so fast, you brat! I, I don't know this is a good idea. I didn't know Endeavor had an Alfred. Crazy how their their gear just got launched to them like that. That's new. He has him pretty locked down though. What are they hoping to do that Endeavor can't do? Like I was saying, I think that's part of what makes it so terrifying is that typically people have lines they don't cross as well as a certain set of parameters for which they make decisions. Because we're all relatively similar in that way, even our adversaries are somewhat predictable. Or at least the, the rules of the game are sort of set. For example, one commonly line that isn't crossed is neither side will go down a road that will obviously lead to mutual destruction. And so that and other things like that create sort of these boundaries where everything that happens within the game happens within those boundaries. But with Someone like this, or someone who doesn't seem to operate logically, let's say, it throws you off because you no longer have anything to stand on. There's nothing. It's just total chaos. One time I was riding the 7 train in New York, and it wasn't even late. I think it was like 8 p.m. I was sitting at the end of the train, and if you've ever ridden the New York subways, you know that typically there are doors at the end of each car that allow you to pass to the next car. And so all of a sudden, this guy comes through the door, and is right in front of me, and is in my face. And one of the first things I noticed was that he had gloves on that he had attached barbed wire to as sort of like these Wolverine claws or something like that. And he got right in my face and was like waving these barbed wire gloves and started screaming at me in what was total gibberish. It was not a language. It was just, I don't know what it was. I don't know where it was coming from. That was one of the most terrifying moments of my life because there was nothing I could do. There was like no talking 
There was no reasoning. I didn't understand what the threat was. All I knew was that this guy was very upset and was directing that anger at me and that there was a very, very real possibility I was going to get slashed. And I'm not even sure what I did. I think I was just sitting there like, oh yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, I understand. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. I'm sorry. Or whatever. Something like that. And something about that like appeased him and he moved on. And I have no idea what, what became of him. While this guy is at least speaking a decipherable language, it's the same kind of vibe. And so what does Deku and Bakugo and Todoroki rushing in really do for them? I don't know. It seems dangerous. Be able to release your maximum output in one flat or with focused precision. First, keep you can the tape maybe. You can do one of those the tape link or whatever it is. The highway paint thread. You're my only hope! Now's my chance. I can reach him easily at this speed. I guess there are a set of rules. If he kills the sun... There's no, no leverage anymore. You may have had a change of heart, but you can't waltz in here and think we'll accept you. Wow, Endeavor froze. Is this going to be the time they... They beat him. I'm warning you. There's one particular thread you could take out. I think we've got this. God, this goes better than the train scene in Invincible. Nice. There you go. Look at Bakko saving. Yeah, I think he's actually really well suited for this. Oh, nice. <laughs> the whip. That was a, a long way to go. That was a lot to do for its its first use in the real world. After a single week. Yeah. Oh, there's never any doubt. <laughs> right. That's that's the key. Break the bond. Break the link. Well, they shut me up once again. You saved me. Yeah. Thanks. You're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I just, just to get used to this now. Back in the day, Deku would have been so thrilled to hear that he was a hero, and now he's sort of like, that's cool, thanks. Watch, in like two years, Deku's gonna be knocking pens out of people's hands. Hey, you good? It's gotta be a lot of emotions right now. Old man's mouth. He's like Bakugo too. <laughs> weird, weird. It feels weird. Extras! You alive? If you mean the nice people in their cars. He's not wrong, though. What was that you wanted us to do, number one? Yeah, he, he got this him. winter, just one time, capture a villain faster than I can! <laughs> he froze. It just meant too much to him. Endeavor's arc has been a gradual shifting towards knowing what's important. He's definitely decided. I swear, I never meant to neglect you, children. He's doing this publicly. This is insane. And Toya, I might as well have killed him myself. Or kinda killed him, or whatever. All I remember is feeling abandoned, like Toya said. This is great. Let's have it out. I'm not a kind person like Shoto is. But you still show up for your family's sake. For your sister and for your mother. You are kind in your own way. <laughs> it's kind of interesting how Natsu turned that around to make himself the bad guy in a way. Talking about being unkind. I wonder if that's not guilt that emerges from him seeing that everyone's trying, but also being extremely distrustful and not being able to open up because of the pain that might ensue if he's wrong and gets burned again. There's got to be a lot of really weird stuff going on internally because to me it seems like he does want Endeavor's love. Well, this may or may not be true for this situation, I feel like. A lot of times these things contain requests. A lot of times when people push others away, what they're secretly hoping for is that other people will chase them, you know, that will close the distance on their own. But if you play that game too long, you know, if you clearly see people are trying, but you're still trying to apply that leverage, you know, like, oh, you don't love me, or you never love me, and looking for that validation, I think it is psychologically uncomfortable because you become the perpetrator in a way. And also your, your actions as well as your interpretation of your actions don't don't really align with what at the core is what you really want. I think what makes this conversation so productive and cathartic is that Endeavor is making really important concessions by having this conversation. Also to be clear, I'm not saying he has to forgive Endeavor, I'm just saying that his emotions reveal that his insecurities are tightly woven into this whole dynamic with his father in a way that Shoto and Futsumi seem a little bit more free from. You're a really caring person. It's also praise from his father, which, you know, is probably something he wants, even though okay that hurts to accept or me. admit to himself. Exactly. That's not the point. Because I don't want forgiveness. I want to atone. Wow. Why should I have to get over my feelings when everything's your fault? So you want to atone? What the hell is there you can even do for us? Public staring continues. Where are your blades? I need you to destroy me. Kill me. Please. This isn't what I wanted. I guess so pathetic. I guess there's a metaphor too with this guy. Never is going in a different direction. It's going the opposite way. Less. Less anger. That's two times in the last two days that you've been targeted. Thank you, Alfred. He's the source. The fire he gives off. Yeah, my favorite class he philosopher. Will be the demise of our world. Oh yeah, this whole endeavor will be the demise of our world thing. What's your hero name? Huh? It's just Bakugo, right? 
Yeah, we haven't. Wrong nerd. We haven't gotten back to Best Genius yet. There's someone I gotta run it by first. Right. I'm looking forward to that. Hope that happens this season. Someone's Somebody's talking about. He's talking about me. Yep. Learn this superstition from Fruits Basket. <laughs> it's very insightful. Very aware. <laughs> Or is that just his hope because they love each other so much? It was really gratifying for me to hear that Endeavor doesn't want forgiveness or at least doesn't expect it. And that he wants to atone because I think the, the significance there is that it puts it into his own actions more concretely. Like forgiveness is something in, in other people's hands. You know, they can choose whether or not to forgive. That's on them. And it's perfectly reasonable what they choose. That's totally up to them, right? But atonement is something that Endeavor can sort of direct. It's like, I'm going to do good. From here on out, I'm going to do the right thing. And that is the, the focus. And I trust that everything will fall where it should as an extension of that. That to me is a, a more powerful thing. It's a more reliable thing. It's very strange, but it can be a really bitter thing. You know, people who have been wronged, let's say, can carry that in their hearts for a very, very long time, obviously, and can carry it longer than the perpetrator of that thing is still that person. There's even this drive sometimes to not want people to change or to not accept that people have changed because of all the trauma and hurt feelings that are still being carried. You know, it's like, how is it possible that I'm still this hurt and have this much pain and the person who I linked to that pain is fine and is like come to terms with things and instincts associated with that are wanting to see the other person suffer or die or refusing to believe the change is possible and it's very tricky because i understand it and it's really up to the individual how they process things and i can't say what's better or worse it's all just ways to process things but i do think a lot of the time at least some of that comes from an insecurity that that experience or set of experiences created or a perpetual fear that hasn't been resolved that perhaps could be resolved or perhaps a sense of imbalance about what the world seems to be compared to what one wants the world to be and the conflict that creates. Although from experience, I can say I've never gotten away with any of my bad actions. You know, even things I've gotten away with, I haven't gotten away with because I remember them and I'll always have that record of wrongdoing. And while that may not be proportionate to other people's pain, it's definitely not getting away with it. But that's a side note. You know, I just think that if possible, seeing other people's wrongdoing as their wrongdoing and letting them deal with the aftermath of that and freeing one's own attachment to that, you know, one's own link to that, that makes it about, you know, our own personalities or something we did wrong or some way we're deficient or some way we're not lovable or some way we deserved it. It's sort of a path out of that. And I think is better than having that like eat at you and forever being linked to that person's wrongdoing. You know, I think that Futsumi and Todoroki are perhaps good examples of that because it's not clear that they forgive Endeavor and it's not even clear that they trust him in the future. It's more like they've come to terms with what happened and they know who they are in it. And so there are no lingering questions about who they want to be and what they want to do. And that allows them to see clearly and not have that sort of baggage, for lack of a better word, that Natsu has, who still has a lot of unresolved things and has, has a lot of personal identity questions wrapped up in the whole Endeavor thing. I already talked to Shoto and Natsuo about this. I'll build a new house somewhere that's in a more convenient location for the two of you. Seems like we're really on the same page now. What can I do for my family? Where do I begin? These questions keep me up at night. So I've had this suspicion for a little while, and this episode and the way they talk about him being basically dead makes me very, very suspicious that this boy, what's his name, is actually Dobby. What made me not say that earlier is I feel like Endeavor would have recognized him in that confrontation they had after the, you know, the whole emu battle. What are they called? Nomu battle. And maybe he did. Maybe he knows that already. Maybe that's what they're talking about with, like, basically dead. But in that scene, it didn't seem like there was that level of acknowledgement. Also in the movie... Heroes Rising, they met, and I wasn't picking up on that. So that's what makes me unsure about it. But the fact that he has a, a kid who's basically dead, sort of in the way that Luke's father is basically dead in Star Wars, and that he's a fire user, and that it's the eyes. The eyes, too. Big part of it. I'm gonna throw that out there. I feel like that's coming. I'm never at that table. Yes. If I truly care about them. You gotta distance yourself? Is that one of the conclusions he's reaching? For their safety. Ah, that's why he has that face. If I truly care about them, I'll stay away. Huh. That's one interpretation. That's one way to <laughs> conclude that. I feel like that's a little, little dramatic. There's probably middle ground solutions. There's probably practical steps you can take to ensure their safety that doesn't, you know, make you totally alienated, but... I get it. That's another thing about the, the Dobby theory. The glass villain predicted that Endeavor would bring down the end of the world. That could be a weird thing of like, well, that's actually Dobby and Endeavor is responsible for Dobby's existence. So, so yeah, the family healing arc, <laughs> the family arc continues and heats up. Endeavor basically doing a great job and an underratedly hard thing of not going 
too fast, you know, not being his usual self and wanting more all at once and always accelerating, not demanding other people forgive him, not demanding people accept him, not demanding people see him for who he really is or whatever as people are ought to do in these situations, and just acting well and letting that be the backbone and letting other people sort of fall into that structure, which seems to be happening pretty quickly. And that to me feels authentic. You know, I think a lot of people change sort of superficially for a desired result, but we're all pretty smart. We can intuit that. We know the difference. Real deep systemic change is difficult, but possible, I think. And one of the key parts of that is just really understanding what the consequences are and how it compares to what we actually want. So yeah, really fun episode. I'll see you guys next time for episode 19.